Hey everyone, today we are going to make a really awesome card flip animation. I've seen this technique in a bunch of tutorials, but everyone makes a vertical flip animation. So in our case, we will create a horizontal flip animation that can be used easily in a real world project, like you see in this example, to present a kind of a chart card animation. And since this technique can be really heavy on your computer and can uh, cause crashes and other problems, especially when it's combined in a comp with other layers and pre-comps, in today's tutorial I'm going to show you the right way to use this kind of animations in your project to prevent it from crashing. With that said, let's get started. So first, Let's create a full HD composition. You can use the same info as in my comp. And now let's use the rectangle tool to create a white rectangular shape without a stroke. Then let's uncheck the constraint proportion, set the width to 800 and the height to 500. And finally add some nice roundness to this shape. Now let's align this shape to the composition and then pre-compose it so we can make changes in this comp to create a different designs for the chart later in the project. Now let's enter this pre-comp and press Ctrl K to adjust the size to fit the size of our shape. Great. And now let's go back to the master comp and duplicate this pre-comp from the project panel. This way we can make changes in this pre-comp and it will not affect the first Precomp. All right, now let's drag this precomp to the master comp and enter it to change the color of the shape. Set it to gray for now. We will come back here later to design the chart as we want. All right, now let's go back to the master comp and create a rotation animation for these comps. For this, we will create a new null object. Now let's convert all the layers to a 3D layers. And now select the first comp, press P and set the Z axis to minus 1. So the two comps won't collide with each other. Great. And now let's parent these two precomps to the null and create a rotation animation for the null for the X rotation axis. So at second 0 we want to see the front of the chart. And at second 1 we want to see the back of it. Let's see how that looks. Looks great. Now let's pre-compose all the layers we have here and name this pre-comp. We can call it main. We can now enter this pre-comp and uh, set its size to fit the pre-comp size. So we can set the width to 900 and the height to 600 as before. Great. And now we are ready to create the flipping animation. For this, let's create a new solid in the master comp. We can name it map. Let's make sure it fits the size of the comp. And we can set the color to black. Now we need to apply a gradient ramp effect on the solid and then place the gradient horizontally. So let's place this point on the left side like this. And then the second point to the right side. Next, we need to find the time displacement effect and add it to the main precomp. Now, let's make sure the effect sees the map we created and it uses the effects on this map. Then, let's set the max displacement to 0.1 and the resolution to 1000 for now. So now, when we move the time indicator to check what we have, we will see the flipping animation and as you can notice it can take a very long time for After Effects to prevent this scene. We will deal with this very soon but for now after achieving the flipping animation let's design our charts pre comps as we like. You can download the project file with the assets I am using to follow along with me or you can design the charts as you like. Thank you. 
Alright, and now if we go to the main comp, we will see that we are seeing the back part of the chart upside down. So uh, let's flip this pre-comp real quick to fix it. Awesome. So once we are good with the design, we can improve the pixelated parts we got in the animation. For this, let's go back to the time displacement effect. If you don't see it, just select the main comp here. Alright, and now let's increase the resolution to 2500. This should make it look a bit better. Just remember, the higher the resolution, the harder it's for After Effects to render the scene. Ok, and now let's create a bit more interesting animation for the scene. For this, first let's enter the main comp, select the null, press U to see the keyframes and delay the rotation animation to start from second one. Great, now let's go back to the master comp and while standing at second one, press P to create the first keyframe for the position of this layer. Now let's press S to create a keyframe for the scale property as well. We can now select the layer and press U to see all the keyframes. Ok, now let's move to the beginning of the animation and move the layer to the right out of the frame. We can set the scale at this point to 50. Let's just adjust the position. Alright, and now go to second 2 and set the size to 130. Then move to second 3 and set the size back to 100. Let's also create a keyframe for the position right here because we want the layer to stay at this position until this point in time. Ok, and now let's move to second 4 and move the layer out of the frame from the left side. And then set the size to 50 and adjust the position. Alright, and now to get the most out of the time displacement effect, let's rasterize our main pre-comp and let's see how that looks. So now the flipping starts from the right side. Let's make it start from the left side. For this, select the solid layer and swap the gradient colors. So now the effect will offset the timing of what's happening in the main comp animation from the left side. And now, once we are good with the effect, let's start improving the animation. So first, let's enter the main comp and easy ease the null keyframes by pressing F9 or Fn and F9 on Mac. Now let's go to the graph editor and make sure we are using the speed graph. And then adjust the handles so the influence will be around 85% from both incoming and outgoing velocity. Let's see how that looks. I think it looks nice. And now let's do the same for all the keyframes in the master comp. Don't worry about the pixelated areas you see now, during the motion we will barely see it, so don't worry. Alright, so with this we have finished creating the flipping animation, but now I want to give you an important tip on how to use it in your projects with a bunch of other layers and precomps. As you saw earlier, this can take a lot of time for After Effects to preview the scene and it will be much harder when you have more assets and precomps involved in your project. So this is why I suggest you to use the render version of the scene in your project and not the original precomp. Let me show you what I mean. So first make sure you shortened the workflow area to the end of the animation. And now head over the project panel and select the master comp. Now go to the composition and choose add to render queue. Now enter the output mode and select quick time. Then in format options select animation. And finally in channels select RGB plus alpha. This way you will render this scene with a transparent background. Ok, now let's choose when to render the animation, change the name and hit the render button. 
This can take a very long time to render, so be patient. Trust me, it's better to use this animation as a MOV file in your project rather than using the original precom. For example, let's imagine that you are now entering a different After Effects project. So all you need to do is just find your render and bring it to your project and then bring this into your scene where you need to use this animation. Now it will render a much faster even if you want to add some uh, new effects on this layer, for example a drop shadow effect like I'm doing right now. Your project will render much faster this way and you will not experience software crashes. And in case you want to change something in the design, just go back to the project where you created the original precomp and then make the changes you need. For example, I will add three spheres in the right upper area of the front part. So I'll enter the first precomp. Uh, I want this look like kind of a software window or a panel. And after finishing making the changes, all you need to do is to render this precomp once again. But this time, select the previous render to replace it with the new one. And render the scene once again. Then when you go back to your project, the file will be automatically updated and you're good to go. Alright, so with this, we have finished the tutorial. I hope you learned something new today and I look forward to see you in the next one.